let's talk about my brand new Kingston Brass Pedestal Sink Faucet. Coming right up! Yesterday I finished installing my Kingston Brass Faucet and I thought that uh, before I get it all spotted up and grimy and all that, that, I, that I'll do a little video here about uh, my thoughts on this particular faucet. We have had this same um, model faucet on before. Back in 2011, we had our bathroom redone and we went with a pedestal sink and we went with a Kingston Brass polished nickel um, faucet. It's uh, an eight inch spread here and it's uh, really a beautiful finish on it. Um, a couple years ago, uh, I, we noticed that the hot water was leaking a little bit. So a few years ago, um, I had a plumber come in and redo this cartridge over here on this one. And the reason why I called a plumber is because I couldn't get this uh, cover piece off. Um, and when he came in, he said, uh, you know, I'm probably going to mar that surface a little bit because it was on so tight. And, and he did. He did a decent job. Um, he got it off, got it back on. At that time, I, want, I also mentioned to him, can you do the cold one as well? Because obviously, if it's time for the hot one to go, it would be a good time to do the cold one. Well, uh, he didn't hear my request for that, apparently. So that's, that's kind of my fault. I didn't reiterate I wanted to have both of them done at the same time. So he only did the hot side. Um, and in the past year, uh, the cold one started leaking, of course. Um, so it leaked and leaked, so I figured I, I better get this figured out. So a few weeks ago, I got around to taking this off and this piece um, was on there really tight and I did scratch it up quite a bit getting it off. Once I took the whole part off, I discovered that the valve and the cartridge uh, was so corroded that uh, I, I couldn't get it apart. Quite frankly, I didn't know how it came apart because um, it was so corroded. I went online, I looked at the diagrams, and I tried to put oil on it and all that. So I told my wife, I said, how about we just go ahead and buy a whole new faucet? Because if I bring the plumber in again, well, first off, it's $110 just for him to set foot through the door. So we've already paid uh, for this side over here. Uh, I forget what the price was. It was probably about $150, close to $200 bucks just to have this one replaced. We didn't want to pay again to have this one replaced when we knew that we could get the whole thing brand new for less than that amount. So that's what we did. Um, we were actually going to go a little bit budget on this one. So we went to Home Depot. We got a Moen uh, brushed nickel faucet. And it, it was nice. It came up and just went out here. Uh, but it was just underwhelming for what we have in here. You know, we have the brushed nickel uh, a towel rack there, the, the toilet tissue holder is brushed nickel, or uh, I'm sorry, polished nickel. Uh, so when we put the brushed nickel on this sink, it was just very underwhelming. So we decided to go again with the Kingston Brass, um, same models we had, and I think it looks really nice. It has a really nice finish. Um, the, the faucet does swivel. When you turn the water on, however, it, uh, it doesn't have much pressure. Check this out. And that, that's all we get. And it's a little bit loud too. So, um, the, the faucet, before I put the aerator in, the water came out very strong. So, I have an idea, it's the aerator that came with the faucet, and I saw those reviews online too, that uh, it makes the kind of a whistling sound when you turn it on, there's not much pressure. So uh, one, or, one of two things, well, there's a couple things I could do. I could just leave it the way it is and live with the water pressure, and we might end up doing that. This, the second thing I could do is take the aerator out of the, um, the old faucet, the old one, put that in, uh, which is okay, it's kind of like a step backwards for me, taking that old piece and putting it in. Uh, the, the other problem with the old one is uh, I always thought that the water came out a little bit crooked out of the spigot, uh, and I can never get that corrected. It, you know, it's just just a little bit. And, um, you know, I I cleaned cleaned it out, cleaned the aerator out a number of times. I uh, put it in vinegar, I let it soak, but I can never get that water to come straight out of the spigot. But anyway, uh, uh, and then the third thing that I could do is uh, you know maybe go to Home Depot, get another aerator. Uh, to see if I can find one to fit and see if that would um, help increase the water pressure coming out of the faucet here. 
One thing I find interesting uh, about a lot of faucets is the placement of the pop-up rod. Um, and this, this faucet is no exception. Um, it's, it's almost like an afterthought and it's put in there and it's designed to be crooked. So, um, and actually this one is a little bit crooked because the washer I have on the bottom part of the sink is not lined up right where it needs to be. So it's crooked in that way and it's actually crooked uh, this way as well. Um, I have it hooked to nothing right now because we don't, we don't use the pop-up um, and I'm even considering taking that off of there, but it's, it's one of those pieces, it is very nicely done. Um, so if I take it out of here, then I go throw it in a closet somewhere, but I, I just wish the, the manufacturers would um, somehow redesign this piece so it doesn't look like an add-on or an afterthought or a mistake. Uh, and that's really just my opinion. Okay, I did not do a, um, a how to install this video on, on this particular faucet. Um, I, I just kind of got into it and I forgot about doing any recording, but it's, it's kind of a straightforward uh, installation if you watch other videos. Um, of course, it took me almost a month to get this done because since this is a pedestal sink, um, I removed the sink from the wall and I was able to obviously set it in the middle of the, the bathroom here and get behind the sink and do all the work from the other side of the sink. The one thing that we did when we, um, let me get my coffee mug out of the way here. When we uh, installed this sink uh, years ago in 2011, we did not run any caulk across the back here. Now I know a lot of people will kind of frown on that, uh, but it, that worked out pretty much to our advantage because we can remove the sink um, whenever I need to to get back there to work on it and so forth. Uh, so if you're really careful with what you're doing, uh, you, you can keep that dry back there. Try to keep the water up here. Um, so getting back to taking the sink, I took the sink off. That was able that allowed me to work behind the sink, and that's when I discovered there's no way I'm going to be able to fix that particular valve and get the cartridge out. Um, but it also allowed me to caulk the baseboard across the bottom, uh, paint all of that again. It allowed me to really clean up this vinyl wainscoting that we have. Um, clean that up really good and really really kind of do some work back here uh, which kind of obviously took took me a little time to get all that done. Barkeeper's friend um, really helped me clean up the porcelain sink here um, with the old faucet uh, by the time I took that off there was a lot of yellowing around here so Barkeeper's friend is the uh, the powdered soap that I use and I'll put a link to that also down below cleaned it up really nicely. I've tried in the past, I've tried uh, bleach, um, I think I tried Ajax as well, uh, and some other uh, cleaners with a sponge, but nothing worked quite like the barkeeper's friend. So that is a great thing to have in your closet if you want to clean up porcelain. I don't know how it would work on uh, vinyl, if you have a vinyl tub, like we have a vinyl tub over here. Um, I don't know if it's the best thing for vinyl, but um, it worked really well. For this sink so I got all the yellowing off and there was there was some black on here you know left over from the, the, the faucet pieces themselves so I was able to clean all that up and you know the other part about it is if I had called a plumber uh, the plumber would come in and fix the part or even if I got the brand new faucet a plumber would come in and fix the part put it back together it would have worked perfectly um, but a plumber wouldn't come in here and scrub my sink down get it all uh, spick and spam looking brand new again Plumber wouldn't have painted the baseboard, caulked that all up. So uh, my wife, my wife was okay with me taking some time to get this done because it was going to look nice, and the finished product is very nice. Um, and that's about it. So again, this is our second go around with this faucet. Um, make sure you register your faucets so that way, um, when you lose your paperwork and so forth, when you call the company, they have a record of what you bought, and they can send you any of the replacement parts. Um, it, I know I'm probably going to need a cartridge at some point over maybe four or five years. Um, and, and I think probably the other thing that I, I should do is to loosen these pieces from time to time. And if I had thought about it while I was putting it together, I would have put some plumber's uh, grease on the, um, the threads of this so it, it wouldn't seize up uh, if it starts getting wet on the inside. Uh, just another little thing when I when I took this when I took the old one off this this piece here was completely filled with water and it just you know came out of course there's like all sorts of crud and corrosion that came out with it but 
Um, and, but, but it wasn't seeping out underneath here, which tells me there's a nice seal on the bottom here, which I guess is okay. Um, but that whole thing was filled with water, and I, I don't want that to happen again. So from time to time, go ahead and loosen these things up and just kind of check, see how everything's going. Once you hear this starting getting a little creaky, you hear like a little squeak in there, um, that's a telltale sign that you need to replace the cartridge. So as soon as you start hearing that, um, give the company a call and they'll send you another one, I think for free, though I can't vouch for that. I'm not 100% sure with this company if we'll get it for free. I think the cartridges in here are actually Delta. Uh, so if you can find out what that is, then it, it would probably be easier to order maybe from Delta or something. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. That's our Kingston Brass Faucet. Um, and again, really nice finish. Swivels up here, has a little bit of a whistle. Not much pressure. That's something we'll keep working on. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we'd love it if you subscribe down below, give a comment, uh, give a like, uh, and otherwise have a fantastic day until our next video. Take care.